My name is Zondra Shelton and I'm a senior at Eldorado High School in Las Vegas, Nevada. My family struggled financially and we couldn't pay our bills. But I was a kid and I didn't know what it all meant. I'd come home and there'd be an eviction notice on their door. I didn't even know what that was. It was just something my mom always took care of. But you know, as tough as things were, I could always count on my grandmother. She was the rock of our family. And then she got sick. That's me with my grandma just before my christening. When I was with my grandma while she was sick, she looked to me and she said, Zandra, you're the rock now. And I remember saying, Grandma, I don't know what to do. You can't leave me. But she did. And I thought, OK, I got this. And I did my best. I cooked, I cleaned, and I tried to pay the bills. But something just wasn't right. I later found out that my mother was on meth, and that's where all our money was going, an addiction so hard to quit, and yet my mother had started it. This weight was just bearing down, and I didn't know what to do. Things were getting harder at home, and the day just before my 15th birthday, my stepfather tried to kill my mother. I didn't know what to do. I rushed home. I found my mother crying, but she was okay. The house, on the other hand, looked like a tornado had hit it. My stepfather was arrested and he was sent to prison. But what some people don't understand is this meant that I lost a very big part of income. My family no longer had the needs to support us the way we should have, the way we could have. My stepfather was gone and now I didn't know what to do. I remember things getting hard and then they got really hard. I would wake up in the morning at 4.45 just so I could get to school just so I could flat iron my hair, just so I could look presentable for the people of my school. Things I never thought I would do, I was forced to do just so no one would know the true pain of me, the true pain of what was going on. Then there are more eviction notices, and then the constable came. And I remember him saying, you have five minutes to pack up and leave. Can you imagine your whole life packed away in five minutes? I work hard. And I am determined, but it's hard to stay on top of school when I don't have a place for my books. My grades dropped and I couldn't make many friends. I had never quit anything in my life, but the day came when I was ready to quit high school. Or that was the, that was the plan. And then I met a teacher named Miss Masuda and she told me that I could be anything I wanted to be, even president. Yeah, right, right? We've all heard that before, and adults always telling you, you can do it, you can be whatever you want. But you know what the difference is? She made me believe it. She introduced me to a program called JAG, Jobs for America's Graduates. And through this program, they helped me to learn how to make a resume, fill out a job application, and how to pay my taxes, things I don't necessarily learn in science class. They also helped me to get my first job. I was a bottle toss girl at Circus Circus, which meant I was in charge of running the games for family entertainment. Wow, what a great learning experience. On the strip of Las Vegas, working, watching tourists? Wow, I learned so much. And it was all thanks to JAG and the true belief of them. This opportunity was so amazing for me. Most importantly, I was able to stay in school. Most importantly, I was able to help out at home. And I thought, I got this. I really do. Now, I am president of my high school JAG program. And when my high school principal decided to open a cyber cafe, he came to me, me, and said that he wanted my program to run it. And I was in charge. I ran. I said yes. I taught my students how to run registers. I made sure they all had health cards. And I made sure they all wore health gloves while in work. Things I learned, skills I had, because I had some training. Now, I'm still up at 4.45 in the morning, but I get ready at home. I catch my bus by 5.20, and I'm in the cafe with my donuts by 6 o'clock every morning. A new commitment for me. Yes? <laughs> yes, I have friends now, and my grades are good. My mother has been clean for two years now. Two years! I'm so very proud and relieved that addiction is no longer something I have to worry about. Now, I'm not working right now, 
but that's just because school takes up most of my time. But that's okay, I got this. My English teacher, Mrs. Ives, gave us a quote by Horace, which states, adversity has the effect of eliciting talents that would have otherwise lain dormant. I could say that's true. I've been homeless, and I've slept on a bus. I've gone without food, and I even had a Thanksgiving when I didn't eat. Well now, after four years of trying, I finally made the varsity cheer squad. It's so much fun. Four years. Same mile for four years, couldn't make it until now, but I did it. It was great. I'm also a varsity choral singer, and I teach Sunday school to preschoolers. We get to dance to gospel music just before we get started. And just so you know, they're so cute when they try to dance. So cute. Our cyber cafe is growing, and it is the second biggest depositor of money into our school fund second only to our student store. We deposit two to three thousand dollars a month off of coffee, Subway sandwiches, and donuts. Every month, two to three thousand dollars. Right now, the biggest thing weighing on my mind is where I'll be spending the next four years. I have been accepted to St. John's University out of New York, Nevada State College, and just this morning, I have been accepted to Dixie State College out of Utah. Now, fingers crossed that Washington State University sends me one as well, because that's where I want to go. I am going to school in the fall, and it feels great to be a teenager in this day and age and be able to say, I'm going to college, and I'm going to do something with my life. And you know, after today and being here with all of you and hearing all your stories and the work that's going on out there, thanks to your commitment, I know we got this. JAG saved my life and I am going places. And how do I know that? Three words, and I think you all know what they are. Join me, we got this. I have big dreams. And now, with Jag in my corner, I see the path to them coming true. Why? Now stay with me, everyone, because one, two, three, we got this. Do you all believe it? I hope so, because one, two, three, we got this. When you get to your homes, to your schools, and your offices, and they ask you what you learned at this summit, what are you going to tell them? We got this. That's right, we do. Thank you. Before, before you leave, in fact, um, I just want to congratulate you for, uh, first of all, your acceptances to your college. You know, we had a chance, basically, to talk uh, yesterday, and what I was impressed with was that you have charted out your journey and let's talk about that a little bit. What, what do you plan to be, basically, a few years from now, in fact? Um, a couple years from now, I plan to become Speaker of the House of Representatives. Here, here. <laughs> now, how do you plan to get there? Um, in order to get there, I plan to spend four years in a college, either Washington State University or you know anywhere else that accepts me, really. And then I plan to take four to six years in the Air Force Base and get into intelligence there. And as soon as that's done, I'll become a motivational speaker and speak to not only youth, but adults all around. And as soon as my name is well known in at least 13 states, I'll go ahead and run for governor or mayor of either Nevada or Texas, because those are my home, right? <laughs> and just as soon as my governorship is over, I plan to run for speaker of the house. And I hope you all vote for me. And we will vote for her, won't we? We do got this, and um, you know, I just want to say how impressed I am with you, first of all. Uh, based on your journey so far, you've had some opportunity moments that you've taken advantage of, and that's very important for all of us, too. We know those opportunity moments that exist, and then we have to take advantage of them. But what JAG has also provided you is that support system, yes. that ring of support, that ring of trust, and that ring of love. So I also want to give a shout out to them, Thank you for all that you've done, first of all, and wish you well on your journey. Thank you. You bet. <laughs> Give a round of support, Thank applause, you. folks. Hi, I'm Rob Gordon. I am the president of Be the Change. First of all, thank you for coming. It's been a long day, but a good day. I think you all would agree. I want to personally thank also not only our sponsors, but our Opportunity Nation staff. They've done the blocking and tackling for this event. 
They're behind the scenes right now. You've seen them running around. They've just been terrific. Can we give them a round of applause? I want to make sure they hear you in the back. You know, as we, uh, in this couple of days, uh, we've been talking about, we got this. And the question is, what do we got? Even though that grammar doesn't sound great, uh, I know that you know that we have come together to really get around the support of providing greater access for Americans to achieve the American dream. You've heard a lot of stories today. I'm going to give you a short story that is mine in terms of an opportunity moment. Sometimes your opportunity moment starts actually when you're born. How you're born, where you're born, to whom you're born. I was very fortunate. I was born to an army officer and an English teacher. That's why my syntax is so good. <laughs> but I was, as a result, well-traveled. Traveled all over the world. Uh, a, most of my young life actually spent overseas in Asia and Europe. And then back to the United States to live in many different zip codes, many different zip codes. And out of that journey so far, I came to know something, the importance of understanding people and culture. We've been talking a lot today about access, education, jobs, but I want to remind you of something, especially for those of you who were here earlier and listened to Senator Booker. It all starts with how we perceive each other. Human beings know themselves through other human beings. If we did not connect, we wouldn't know about ourselves. This is important because as we raise our hand to do something about access, the degree to which we connect to others, the degree to which we look in others' eyes and see their potential, and see their light is the degree to which we learn more about ourselves as well. This is a human enterprise. And I thank my family, my father, my mother, my siblings for my journey to understand more about humans and to connect and to in some way have been positively affected and positively affect. And that is the reason, at least some of it, for life, for this visible life journey that we live. And so as we leave today, I'd like to enjoin you to do something. I had the privilege of going to South Africa twice, working and serving in some of the townships, actually, with City Year, learning more about that culture, and coming to terms with a South African term, and some of you know it, it's called Ubuntu. Now, it has a number of different definitions, but they are all around humanity, a human kindness, a humanness, a human finding humanity through other human beings. I enjoin you to do that as you leave. In terms of opportunity moments, I enjoin you next to find your opportunity moment by creating an opportunity for someone else. Thanks for coming. Thanks very much, and I look forward to working with you on opportunity. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks, Rob. Appreciate it. Thank you, Rob. Thank you all so much for being here. This has been a fantastic day. Now the real work starts. Let's go get it done together. Thank you all so much. Have a great night.